Uh, welcome. So uh, this is my first time presenting on this topic, even though I've been um, uh, thinking about this topic for a long time and, and working with uh, some of the other um, uh, folks in the initiative uh, group. So I'm talking about the IXP Fellowship. IXP is a terrible acronym for inexperienced people, person? I think that's what we decided. We just liked the way it sounded, IXP. Um, but the idea is it's a community-driven, it's, it's an official community initiative on Drupal.org um, whose initial goal is to incentivize organizations to hire new um, and inexperienced Drupal developers. Um, uh, as a trainer, I see a lot of developers who come through my training and other trainings who know Drupal fairly well but have no experience and have a really difficult time finding that first gig. So that's the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, so together with Carlos and Anna um, and myself, um, we're kind of the, the leads of this initiative, more or less. Um, I've been around for a long time. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. All right, so we're going to cover um, kind of the origins of this, a general overview, um, where we're at, and, and, and where we want to get to, um, as well as uh, what the current status is, um, how to collaborate, and um, what's next. So, origins. So this is not something that um, Carlos and I came up with and, um, you know, just been pushing ourselves. Actually, I, I would argue Carlos has, you know, been, been working and thinking about this for a lot longer than I have. Um, and he and some other people from, you know, around the world have talked about this. At various DrupalCon events, um, uh, events in Europe, camps like this, trying to just get an idea if this is something that everyone thinks is a good idea, and if we have the initial scope right, and what the future scope might be. So this is not like some wild hair that, that a couple of people have had. This is, there's been a lot of discussion going on about this for a while. Um, started with this, uh, this group of folks in uh, DrupalCon uh, uh, Lil, so last year. Um, and obviously that's Tim, uh, Tim Lennon from the DA, Carlos, and then I always, the other two guys, if I had my notes, if I could find my notes, well, we're going to keep going. Overview. All right. So the goal is to incentivize organizations to hire new and inexperienced Drupal developers. Um, and really that's going to start with uh, some minor tweaks that we have proposed uh, to jobs.drupal.org to um, uh, identify positions that are specific to new and inexperienced Drupal developers. And um, you know the, the, the thing that hopefully will make this all work is we want to reward organizations uh, with, uh, as I like to put it, a, uh, a, a dump truck load of contribution credits um, in exchange for hiring inexperienced Drupal developers um, for a certain period of time and meeting certain criteria over that certain period of time. So there's a process going to be involved, there's going to be some checks and balances, uh, but in the end we really want to incentivize organizations to do this. And honestly the only currency that we have in the Drupal community right now are contribution credits. Um, so, you know, an inexperienced person in Drupal, their journey is, you know, to find Drupal, decide something they want to learn, um, learn it in how, what, whatever manner, you know, they see fit, whether it's, you know, by watching videos, by taking a training course, by reading books, by coming to events, by reading blog posts, you know, however they learn, they learn. Um, becoming an IXP in our definition is having a certain level of knowledge, which we have somewhat outlined. Um, you know, it, it's difficult to be super specific with that type of thing, um, but we do have some general guidelines. Um, and then the big hurdle uh, that we feel is get a job, right? Get paid to do some of this stuff. Um, and that's often the, the biggest hurdle for new and inexperienced people. Um, it's always nice if along the way they can earn some contribution credits. And I think it's, uh, it's fair to say that if you have some experience as a Drupal developer where you're getting paid and someone can go to your profile page and see contribution, you know, some type of activity in the community, that kind of qualifies you to be an experienced developer. Maybe it's a junior developer, maybe it's an advanced developer, but somewhere along that way, if you have 
you know, kind of that magic mix of some experience and, and contributions, uh, most people, at least in the Drupal community, will consider you an experienced developer. So that's where we want to get these folks. Um, so the scope of the initiative is, you know, first uh, we needed to uh, define the skills that uh, someone should have to be considered a trained, you know, new inexperienced Drupal developer. So we don't want to consider folks who are, you know, brand new to Drupal and haven't, you know, um, you know, learned Drupal, understand nodes and entities and fields and all that stuff. There is a certain level of learning that has to be done before someone is ready to earn money for Drupal. So we need to kind of define, okay, what's that, you know, what's the, what's, what's the hurdle there to, to become someone who can be considered for an IXP position. Um, then we need the connection method. Well, we have jobs at Drupal.org. Um, we, you know, we've uh, identified a few small tweaks that can be made um, to better identify um, positions that are specifically for IXPs. Um, define the, the conditions of the engagement. Um, and so this is so that an organization can't hire an IXP for two weeks at 10 hours a week and say, okay, we've done it, give us our contribution credits. So we're gonna define a minimum length of engagement, it has to be a paid position. Um, and there is a little bit of reporting that goes back and forth um, uh, to, uh, as part of those conditions. Um, and then a set of requirements for the end of the engagement um, or the, the, the defined engagement, the minimum engagement time to show that yes, this developer you know, now has some level of experience um, as a Drupal developer. And then when that's all said and done, the reward. Uh, the contribution credits for the organization. Um, over the past year and a half, when we've been talking about this, there's a lot of ideas. There's a lot of uh, people who have ideas on what should be added to the IXP in the future. Um, Carlos and I largely have been the bad guys and said, no, we're keeping the scope tight to get things going. Um, I'm not going to go over all of these, but, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of folks who uh, have ideas, um, but they're not really in scope yet. We feel like we need to get the, the, the core nugget of this program launched before we can start um, talking about some of these other things that would just expand the scope. All right, so where are we, where are we right now? Um, so we have uh, a written proposal. It's been drafted, shared with the DA about two, three weeks ago now. Um, it includes definition of an IXP, definition of a hiring organization, minor additions slash changes to jobs at Drupal.org. Um, we outline what the reporting requirements are from the hiring organization, what the reporting requirements are from the IXP. Um, those are kind of interim progress reports and then a report at program completion, which would lead to the awarding of contribution credits. So from a technical standpoint, there's not a lot here to do. It's some you know, changes to jobs.drupal.org. Um, it's creating some, uh, some forms, probably initially as Google Forms, for, for folks to report. Um, the proposal is largely about the processes, the definitions, and the reward. Um, so we do not have a number yet on the, um, on, on the size of the reward. Um, I would like it to be significant, perhaps the most significant, you know, in terms of number of contribution credits for a single activity that an organization can do. Uh, more, more than a core contribution. Um, you know, I, I see it as we really want to reward organizations for doing this, because this is kind of a long-term you know, issue in the Drupal community where we've got all these experienced developers and we've got all these new developers and there's very, different, there are very few ways to go from one to the other. So I see this as a, a long-term community health issue and the more we can reward organizations, um, the more folks will get going through the program and I think that just leads to a healthier community in general. All right, so uh, we need your help. Um, so you can get involved in the IXP Fellowship in the Drupal Slack. By the way, this is going to be, we're nowhere near going to go 45 minutes. I should have said that up top. So, um, yes. yeah. No. <laughs> Look, my goal here is, and, you know, and Carlos and Anna, as they travel to different events as well, our goal is just to get the word out. 
right? We just want to you know, spread awareness of this. Um, I don't want to bore anybody with, with, with more than, than needs to be. Um, but there's a Slack channel, IXP Fellowship. Um, we really should have, a, I was thinking about this just as I started the presentation. I don't even think we have the URLs to the initiative, which really should be on a slide here, so I will add those in a bit. Um, Thank you. So Drupal.org slash community slash initi initiatives. Say it again? It's community dash initiatives. Okay. Community. If you just look for community initiatives, yeah. it'll be a long list there. All right. I'm going to say it just for the recording. Drupal.org slash community dash initiatives slash IXP. Thank you very much, Ben. Um, there is a, I believe, um, it's a Drupal.org slash project slash IXP is where our issue queue is, and maybe Ben can confirm that for me so I can say that one correctly. In the, but we do have an issue queue there. There's a lot of ideas in there. Um, uh, one of the things that, in, in my head, we need to do in the short term once we get this launched, um, assuming, knock on, there's no wood near me, but I would knock on if there was. Uh, if we can get this launched, get some students through it. Um, I want case studies, obviously. Those are always good to, like, you know, for folks to say, well, what is this thing all about? Well, here's a case study of how this organization hired this person and what a success it was. Um, so uh, that's something which, um, uh, you know, kind of low-hanging fruit to help with. And then live events like this. So um, if anybody wants to organize a BOF or even present these slides, just feel free to reach out and, and, and we will hook you up with that stuff. All right, so next steps. Oh, okay, I guess I'm supposed to talk about that just right now. Uh, as of right now, we're kind of in a holding pattern. Because um, DrupalCon Barcelona is, what, two weeks from now? Something like that? Two and a half, three weeks from now? Um, so, you know, sending a new proposal to the DA is kind of sending it into a black hole until after Barcelona, um, which we were aware of that. Um, so Carlos and I will both be in Barcelona. We'll, we'll probably try and um, abduct uh, uh, Tim, Tim One and Tim Two to talk about this a little bit more and kind of you know, lobby uh, to make this happen. Um, in the meantime, you know anything that you know, any other ideas that folks might have, visit our issue queue um, and just help us spread the word. That's what we're that's what we're looking for. Um, you know, I, I talk to organizations all the time. I'm planting the seed about this. And uh, we would love to, once we do get this implemented and make this happen, we'd love to have a, a great you know, kind of first wave of, of folks going through this so we can uh, you know, adjust and iterate and, and, and make this better every step of the way. Um, yeah, so thank you. And that's it. Look at that. 15-minute presentation. Unless Chris has a 30-minute question. Oh, uh, <laughs> I can try to think of one. No, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, do you have all of the tools, and uh, is there anything blocking the, the current effort? Is there anything you need in order to make progress? Well, we need the DA to work with us and say, okay, this proposal is good, or we need to make some changes. So at this point, we're waiting on the DA. As far as the tools, Carlos and I, we're, you know, we are single-minded at getting this thing launched at the current scope. Um, that does require, as I mentioned, some tweaks to jobs at Drupal.org. And uh, we're talking minor tweaks so that folks can search specifically for IXP positions. So it's going to be a position type. Um, we might even ask for a, uh, you know, a menu item that you, know, you can just click on and see all the available IXP positions. So that's kind of a technical thing on the DA side. Um, but anything else, you know, we're, gonna, we're probably just going to use Google Forms to start for the reporting because um, we know that we don't know everything yet, so we're going to probably have to iterate a little bit as we go. So for the actual thing that, you know, the, the initial scope, we're really just waiting on, you know, word from the DA on, on what the next steps are. But thank you. Thank you. Just a follow-up for that. Is that proposal already submitted to the DA then? It is submitted, and Carlos and I, and I'm going to apologize, I'll fall on the sword here. We have been, we have been, the, the, uh, neglecting? That's not the right word. Remiss. We've been remiss. We, we keep meaning to post that in the issue queue, the final proposal. Um, we kind of uh, were working on it as a Google Doc, and we were trying to get it in to the DA early enough before Barcelona where it wouldn't be put in this holding area, but we missed that. Um, 
But yeah, that's something we know that we have to do. We, it, it, we'll make it publicly available. The reason why I mentioned yeah. this, maybe some, something offline, but yeah. um, I actually have been involved in uh, the innovation team, which right. is, uh, you know, and there's an innovation ideas queue as well. I don't know if you want to leverage that, but uh, the okay. whole idea is to make that a similar process to like the core ideas, right. except for it being for community initiatives. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So, so is that a is that a, a project on Drupal.org with yeah, an issue queue? Okay. Yeah, just in, project on yeah, yeah. Just innovation is what's called. Um, or? Innovation ideas. Innovation so that's ideas. Kind of where it starts. Okay. And so you could post it there, and then yeah. it gets assigned over similarly. You know, get it okay. but it's more of a the idea is that it would be similar to the Drupal core idea. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Appreciate that. Yes, so, Matthew. So this acronym IXP. Yeah. I was confused by it, uh -huh. and I still am confused because you kept referring to developers. Yeah. But then you started off by saying inexperienced person. So I'm just, I don't know, I'm no marketer or whatever, yeah. but I'm confused by the acronym. Could you say more about what IXP actually means? Yeah, and you may have put more thought of it into it than uh, the folks who originated it, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> ISP in, in my head, I, I just think inexperienced person, right? Also, inexperienced developer. So it's someone who um, has been trained or has learned Drupal. That's probably the best way of saying it. Has learned Drupal somehow on their own through a training company, whatever, um, and is ready to work. And whether whether they're ready to work as a site builder, a back end developer, a front end developer. You know, whatever. They have a minimum set of skills that they feel they've learned, and they are now looking for their first bit of experience. That's kind of what we're considering. You know, there's, there are discussions um, in the issue queue um, where the scope would be inexperienced and junior developers, so folks with a little bit of experience. Um, but we decided, no, let's keep this simple, and let's, let's go for folks looking for their first paid Drupal position. So I don't know if that helps with the acronym question, but... Well, I'm just thinking yeah. about like the practicality of yeah. an agency needs somebody, and usually they might be thinking, I need a back-end developer, right. I need a front-end developer, I need a designer that right. understands Drupal, and it seems like all of those could be inexperienced with Drupal. Right. Valuable. Well, I think that's going that will probably come out of just the... Um, as people learn Drupal, they naturally will figure out, oh, you know, I'm more interested in back end, or I've got more, I've got a, a JavaScript background, so I'm more interested in front end. Um, and the ISP positions, you know, will have, you know, they'll have descriptions of what the what the duties are of that position, just like any other job, right? So I think that will naturally just kind of filter that way. If I know I'm, you know, looking for my first position, but I'm more geared towards front end, I'm probably going to be looking for IXP front end positions. Why not just call uh, elementary level positions and make it explicit to the thing that it's targeting? I don't have an answer to that. Okay. Honestly, I mean, you know, I think IXP was was chosen before I really got on board, so. <laughs> That's so funny that this, that, that we're, that this is what the discussion is. Well, but okay. yeah, it's fine, I mean, yeah. This, the Slack channel is ISP Fellowship, which to me makes ISP, it seem yeah. like you're yeah. offering a fellowship to somebody. Yeah. Which, I mean, I'm just saying, like, if I'm confused, you know. I know, that's not a good start, yeah. All right, no, that's, that's great feedback. I will, I will definitely share this with Carlos. And um, so what's the suggestion? Is there a suggestion in there? I don't From want a to, branding? I feel like I don't want to like be oh, no. people to suggest an outside idea. <laughs> well, I think I heard entry level back here, right? The yeah, word? entry level. Developer, well, entry initially level. the scope is entry level, but you know, folks definitely want to expand the scope at some point in the future, so it's not just entry level. So hmm. maybe we can just call it one of those acronyms that doesn't really have a definition. Like. So worse. The worst, yes, the worst kind of acronym. What is the point? <laughs> you can call it Sam. Yeah. I mean, the goal to me is like growing the community in a way that supports people financially through work doing Drupal development. I, I don't know if I'd phrase it that way. Okay. The goal is to get new Drupal developers their first paid gig. 
Which, again, that leads to what you're saying. Right? But I, like, I, I don't know. I, I have, yeah, yeah. since I came on board with this, I have been very much, like, we need to keep the scope simple and narrow and achievable. Sure. Because as soon as we start talking about the scope in more generic terms, then a lot more things can kind of wiggle their way into that scope. So. It's not even about community building, per se, initially. Well, it is, but that's but the goal. I mean, look, if we do, if we do this, that leads to community building, right? We get more people, more experienced developers in the community. So. I mean, there's but you can argue then that. Drupal that don't get involved in the community. But they got to start somewhere. Right? I suppose. I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, yeah, those are separate things, in a way. I don't know. I feel like that. I feel like getting people their first. Well. Oh, I, I, yeah, I can, I can see that. I I'm can see that. I'm surprised at how many people showed up at this conference that like have been using Drupal for years. Yeah. That we'd never met before. Yeah, that's true. There aren't a lot of people who don't use Drupal that are part of the Drupal community, though, right? I mean, yeah. Right? Like, yeah, you got to mm -hmm. start there. Yeah. Is it, was there a national on the issue queue, which is at drupal.org slash project slash issues <laughs> slash IXP? Well, it also made me wonder, like, the... Our, the goal of this camp, at least going back to when I helped right. 20, 2011 when we started, we always would say our goal is to bring in new people to the community. Okay. That was our number one goal. We used it for decision making all the time. Okay. okay That's the mission statement. This, yeah. Should we do this or this? What's better for attracting new people? Yeah. So it made me wonder how Drupal camps could help support this initiative. If at all, like maybe. Yeah. Well, I think once it's up and running, then you know it, it could definitely, um, you know, Drupal. Any Drupal event could help this initiative by, you know, promoting it to organizations who necessarily aren't involved in the community yet. Like, here's a way to get involved with the community in a non-technical way, to get your 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 name out there as far as someone or an organization that that can gain contribution credits. You know, and what you need to do is basically hire one of these, I almost said IXP fellows, but I will, I will not use that word. <laughs> I don't want to say anything that sounds like I am criticizing this idea in any way, because I'm not. I'm uh, for the record, uh, Matthew Tift is not a malcontent, this is what we're saying right now. <laughs> no, this is great. No, this is, you know, this feedback is, you know, this is what we're looking for. Um... The naming is interesting. Honestly, I, I haven't, I haven't put that much mental thought into the naming. Um, maybe I should have. I don't know. Um, I, I've just been very focused on um, uh, keeping the scope achievable, because you know I, I think most people who are involved in, involved in Drupal community um, probably involved in an initiative at some point where scope creep kills the initiative, right? Where it just gets big bigger and bigger and it just gets to the point where it's it's no longer achievable or there's no one to step up and say no this is where we're drawing the line for now and Carlos and I made a decision you know earlier this year I think at some point where basically we need to we need to say no this is the current scope let's achieve this and then we'll entertain how we expand it from there so yes can you talk about the requirement forms and what that feedback, like what are the benchmarks for each of those? Yes. Um, from the top of my head, without opening up the document, um, there will be a, a, a weekly, basically, check-in form for the IXP as they're engaged, um, just letting us know the type of stuff they're working on. Um, one of the requirements on the organizational side is that they are provided with a mentor for um, a mentor within the company for I figure what the number of hours is per week that they have access to this person. So basically just checkbox saying, yes, I've met with my mentor. Mentor has been made available to me. Um, uh, so yeah, so for on the IXP side, those are the two big data points we're looking for. What type of stuff are they working on and how's the mentor been made available? And then we kind of ask the same thing on the organizational side as well. You know, have you made a, a mentor available? Um, 
what kind of tasks are you assigning them. Um, and then somewhere in there, I forget which side we put it on, um, uh, but there is a, there is a, um, a blogging or a publicity, I don't even know what the right word is there, requirement um, in order to help encourage uh, the IXP to get involved in community in a community issue queue. So like what issues have you been active in? Um, and then at, towards the end of it, um, well actually the, the initial hurdle it, for organizations is how long is the engagement? Um, is it a paid engagement? How many hours per week is the engagement? Um, that way we know that they are hitting the minimum you know, over the, the, over the span of the entire uh, engagement. Um, we toyed with the idea of setting a minimum pay, but that's next to impossible when you're dealing with the world. So we decided, all right, keep it simple, just make it a paid position and, and, and go from there. Um, and at the very end, there is a final um, a report that's due. And again, we say report, but Google form yeah. filled out by both just to confirm that both the hiring organization as well as the IXP both agree that the minimum requirements have been met. Um, and then based on that, then we can proceed with uh, awarding the contribution credits. So I think I answered your question in there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Joe. Have you, like, I'm curious what kind of support the program or we as a community can provide to the organizations that are doing the hiring. In addition, so like they get this reward at the end, it's yeah. like, cool, you get a bunch of contribution credits. Yeah. Um, but how do we also like incentivize them by offering them like, oh, we have like a mentoring pool that all the mentors can communicate with, with each other. Yeah, no, we, we've definitely, we, we've, we've had a lot of ideas around supporting the organizations. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, the, you know, in, because I, I, you know, I, I've been lucky enough where I have worked with organizations and placed some of my beginner graduates as interns or junior developers with them. And what I've learned from that experience is most of the time, they just need an idea at the beginning of like, what do we do with this person? Yeah. What kind of tasks are they suitable for? Um, so that's kind of where the case studies that's why case studies is on here, because I feel like that's perhaps the, 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 the first thing that needs to get done um, once, this, once our scope is met and we start expanding things, because I think these are the most valuable um, resources for p organizations who are potentially interested in participating. Because like, okay, I'm gonna hire this person, but what can they do and how should, you know, so the case studies will provide ideas and examples of how other organizations have worked with these junior developers. Um, on the mentoring side of it, you know, it, it's a great point because, you know, a lot of organizations are not like kind of mentorship friendly, we'll say. Um, so, um, again, I'm lucky enough where I have experience with this. Um, for, our, for my beginner students, um, they all get a community mentor and I've got some documentation to help both the mentor and the mentee get started and what that engagement should look like and um, kind of what the cadence should be. Um, if they're at a loss for like what they should even talk about, here are some places to start. So I think resources like that are, are super valuable as well. Um, I think it's more falls on, I think it falls more on the organization side than the IXP side. Um, so that's kind of where my head's at. I think Carlos and I are pretty simpatico with this, um, you know, where, where case studies are really the, the place we're going to start. Um, and there's definitely issues uh, in the issue queue. Um, I think we did, I, I think I have a slide here where we mentioned some of them, right? Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of um, stuff. I mean, there are folks who want to create, like, you know, training programs as part of the IXP. I'm like, okay. Uh, do you have 5,000 hours to spare? Because here we go, you know? Um, you know, we've had folks who said, well, uh, you know, a, a certification from Drupal.org, you know, would make sense because that way IXPs would, can show that they've been certified before, you know, entering this program. All great ideas, but I'll take a tremendous amount of bandwidth from probably a large number of volunteers. Um, but a lot of ideas out of the current scope are all about supporting 
the, the organizations and, and, and kind of greasing the wheels for that process. That makes sense. Yeah. This, a lot of this to me reads as like support for the IXP, for the person who is um, getting the job. And it, but yeah. it's good to hear that there's also thought going into how do you support the organizations that are. Yeah, I, honestly, that's where I, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to say I don't think about the IXP, yeah. <laughs> but I definitely think more about the organizations, cool. right? Because there's definitely, you know, the, the, there's, not a, there's not a super strong culture of mentorship at all organizations, right? And a lot of times it's an afterthought. Like, oh, you can go talk to this senior dev if you need help, even though that senior dev is overbooked and isn't a great communicator. And, what's that? And if you can find them, yeah. So it, that kind of, like, understanding the importance of mentorship and something you know goes way back for me is you know i'm a big believer that organizations should um uh, baseball now anal baseball analogy like build up their farm system right hire hire in the inexperienced and move them along you know hire for culture and you know move them along technically until you know they become your senior developers but that's a hard you know that's a that's a long term thing, and not all organizations are kind of built for that. Um, I have a question. Then. Yeah. Um, so, as a qualifier on the uh, employer side, yeah. would an in, a paid internship qualify? Yeah, we actually again we have talked about does does the position need to be called something specific? Right. An internship, a fellowship, a junior developer position, entry, you know, and. Like we decided we don't want to be involved with that. It needs to be a paid position with a minimum number of hours. Right? We want to make this as, as achievable as possible. So, yeah, there's no, you know, we, we don't, I don't want to say we don't care, but I don't think we care, like, what it's actually called. Because mm -hmm. I wonder if part of those case studies that you're, if you've already thought about this, mm -hmm. I don't know, um, might include, like, that end, uh, what that would look like for the, the hiring, and, you know, the organization. Know, and, and how they're yeah how like what what they're how they're thinking of that employee if they are a short term long term you know intern. yeah I mean ideally in a perfect world it's it's a position that will grow mm -hmm. you know in from from entry level internship to junior to full developer to you know it will it will kind of grow with them but with anything new like this we don't know what we don't know mm -hmm. we don't know how organizations are going to use this. Um, we've thought a lot about how organizations might potentially game this system. I mean, we're offering, we want to offer a really big reward, and we've seen other parts of the contribution credit system get gamed, so we thought long and hard about, okay, what, what guardrails can we put in place to avoid that? Um, so the type of, um, of, of engagement is definitely something that we've talked about as far as, you know, could this be gamed? And, that's why we decided to keep things simple and just say, has to be a paid position, a minimum number of hours, I forget what that number of hours is exactly, but past that, you know, access to a mentor, um, and, you know, tasks designed for this specific skill set, which we've defined. And the mentor doesn't have to come within the organization, it could be a community mentor. Could be a community mentor. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, my company, we, we provide mentorship services for other organizations. It's crazy that so we do that. There, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I, I, yeah, we don't care where the mentorship. Comes. I mean, obviously, the mentorship is always going to be, um, I think, most effective or most efficient. Maybe efficient is the right word. If the mentor comes from inside the organization, familiar with the processes of the organization, the culture of the organization, the tasks of the organization, that's going to be the most efficient path. But if that's not available, okay, well, a mentor from outside the organization. Um, you know, could, could have you ever work. done a, or have you thought about a mentor, the mentor sort of situation with an employer side mentor type situation? I guarantee you, there's something yeah. in the issue I'm, too I'm about just, that. I'm, yeah, I can see, like, yeah, yeah the, you're, like you're saying, it's more efficient to have, yeah. a, you know, organization side mentors. So if you can, you know, get them familiar with what that looks like, yeah. even if they need a little hand holding, you yeah. know, more than a guide, I can see that how that works. But yeah, I yeah. think, I think. You know, organizations, it's, it's it's a hard sell to to hire someone who doesn't have any real-world uh, right. experience, right? And That's so why we want a big, fat carrot picture. on it. 
yeah. of you know how it could be successful for them. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, that's definitely where you know hopefully case studies will will really help us with that. Um, in the short term, I think you know when we when we launch it, there'll be you know if we get five to ten positions available and get five to ten folks through and get two to three case studies out of that, I think that's a win. And, you know, we, we learn what we learn and we iterate and, and move on from there. The reason why I ask about intern, if you don't mind, uh, yeah. is because on uh, I'm involved with uh, Drupal for Gov and uh, uh, right. who is the fiscal sponsor for Drupal GovCon and yeah. as an intern coordinator for Drupal for Gov. And it's a paid internship. There's a summer program that we actually get funded from somewhere else, but, you know, through uh, Drupal for Gov for um, the regular semesters, we, you know, we try to fund for those internally. Um, I do wonder if some similar model could be used, you know, in conjunction with this, if, if it, you know, would be open to conversations in that regard. And, you know, also just in general that maybe this is something other um, fiscal sponsors and or, or community camp groups um, could think about um, doing an, a similar internship program, you know, and then that could be the middle sort of, you know, transition process between a, a trained, experienced, mm -hmm. then in, then like fully employed sort of situation for. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if yeah. it would really qualify. I mean, we'd have I'd have to look at the you know specifics on yeah. requirements or whatever for the hours per week and everything specifically for what I'm involved in, but. Right. But I do wonder how that, if that might ease some of the concern on the employer side, the, the being able to like utilize even uh, in intern uh, part time as a partnership with a community group of some kind. Yeah, no, I mean we'd have to. In the, in the channel, if it's not in the channel yet, so. Yeah, I would check the, either the channel or the issue queue. I don't know. I, I don't think we've discussed that okay. specifically. You know, with. Um, in conjunction with camps and, yeah. and, and Drupal organizations like that, but yeah, no, I mean, might be a thing. Okay. Yeah, it might be. All right, I'll yeah. keep that in mind. Thanks. Yeah, Matthew. one more thing. Oh, sure. I, in the past, I remember trying to get something kind of related, like you, you going through outreachy, right? To try and get bring in interns into the Drupal community, right? And I was trying to raise money because you have to like raise seven thousand dollars to bring someone in to get a job for three months, right? And, and and like fund that person, and I just wonder if maybe like an organization like that might have case studies to kind of show that that approach can be beneficial for. Yeah, so case studies that aren't directly out of our program, but yeah. out of related situations. Sort of selling. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, um, yeah. If you know of any specific, it sounds like you might. Well, our outreach right. and Google Summer for Code are the two that come to mind. Oh, outreachy is the actual like yeah. proper noun. Outreachy is an organization. Oh, I thought it was like outreachy type things, like <laughs> no, 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 like scratchy or you know, itchy or no outreachy. Okay, is it with a Y or, or in, with the Y? With yeah. the Y. Okay, all right. I can share it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Share that in the channel yeah, or somewhere. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, anyone else? All right. Thank you very much. Look at that, we went almost 45 minutes. So. <laughs>